Okay, so we want to look at some of these revenue problems where you need to write equations. So they kind of look like this. A 210 room hotel is filled when the room rate is $50 per day. And it's 210 rooms. And then if I increase this price by one dollar, then the number of rooms goes down. So we have kind of these two entities or variables in the problem. One is that price changes. Um, when price changes, the quantity changes, right? <clears throat> okay. So find the room rate, I think it's supposed to say, that maximizes daily revenue. Um, so in general, revenue, what I'm trying to write an equation of, is just price times quantity. Okay. Okay, and so I have this, but both my price and my quantity are changing. Um, in this problem. So um, one way to approach this is to write an equation for price and then write a separate equation for quantity and then bring them together, multiply them together. Um, so price, uh, this linear relationship that is $50 today. So I, I have this kind of um, thing that's talking about how things are changing, it's the number of price, let's say, increases. And in this problem, I'm going to name that x. Okay, so when x, I increase price once, then it changes, right? But it's always changing by the same amount. So this is a linear function, right? And linear functions have the form mx plus b b being the y-intercept or what happens when x is 0. So if I don't change the price at all, this b is $50, right? And then this slope is how much I expect kind of price to change if um, x changes by 1. So when I change the price once, price goes up by, or when I change the price once, then it goes up by just one dollar. So in this case, m is one, and then I have x. Now, if if this went up by five dollars, I want to make sure you know, then that would give me five x, right? Okay, so in this alternate universe, but what we really have is price is this thing, okay? Now, so over here, we also have kind of a similar um, thing for quantity, this is a linear relationship. If I don't change the price at all, then I sell out this 210 rooms. I know that, right? Um, so that's B. When X is 0, quantity is 210. And then when I change it once, quantity goes down by 3. That's a negative 3 for slope. Okay. Okay, so then I have revenue is P times Q, which is X plus 50 times negative 3X plus 210. Okay. Um, and then I kind of want to know what any, like what can X be in this context? Um, and so I have, um, I, I want to go back and look at the original reading of this problem, and it says a 210 hotel room, um, it's filled when the room rate is $50 per day, which to me says I don't really need to think about lowering the price at all, right? So if I hadn't if I had not reached maximum capacity, that might be an option, but I'm, I'm already at a maximum, I'm already full at $50 per day, 
So I really don't want to talk about decreases sex. I want I want a price increase. which is denoted by positive values of x. Okay. Um, the only other thing I might want in this problem is for to make sure that price stays positive. Um, but I think if I set this as greater than zero, that that will necessitate that. But sometimes you get 1x plus 50 is greater than zero. But in this case, I just get x is bigger than negative 50. But I, I kind of want price to stay positive. I mean, I guess the other thing we want to think about is I also want quantity to stay positive, right? I want both of these to be positive entities. So let's say 3x plus 210 is greater than 0. Negative 3x is bigger than 210, oh negative, and then x, and then this flips, x is less than 70. So this might actually be kind of my limitations, that I want to look um, from x is bigger than 0 to x is less than 70. Because, you know, I, I don't want to be running negative numbers of rooms, okay? Um, okay, so, um, and those kind of set, uh, kind of, I would call them reality boundaries on, on the model, um, where the model is probably useful. So I, if I want to maximize revenue, we'll think about these 70 and 0 when we come back. Then I take the derivative, and I'll use the product rule, so I get x plus 50 times negative 3 plus 1 times negative 3x plus 210. So I get negative 3x minus 150 minus 3x plus 210 plus 60, I think. And then when I solve for critical values, so let me put this, I'm going to erase that, and then I'm going to put a little comma in here. I want to find critical values. And I set r prime is defined everywhere, but r prime can be 0, negative 6x plus 60 equals 0. And I get x is 10. Okay. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that this is a maximal value. Um, I This might just be, this, this could be just a critical point, but I have to do some test. So test. So I'm going to test r prime. There's 10. So um, from, in this case, from 0 to 10, and then from 10 to 70, because those are the limits, um, I find a test point, and I plug into r prime, right? So let's say I'll use 5, and over here I'll use 15, and r prime is this negative 6x, so I have negative 6 times 5 plus 60, which I think will give me 30 and then 15, let me see, gives me negative 30, okay? So it's increasing and then decreasing, so that does mean this is a max, okay? Now, I have to also keep in mind um, that this is not a price. it's the number of price increases. So when I go back and it says, what's the price point? Let's find find the price point that maximizes daily revenue. I have to plug that in, but see, I have this equation for price here. It's x plus 50. So I'll go down here. Price is x plus 50. So price is 10 plus 50, which is equal to $60. 
and then max revenue at that price I can plug 10 into the re revenue equation which was x plus 50 times negative 3x plus 210 I think and then I'll get 60 here because I have 10 for x and then negative 30 plus 210 I think is 180 is that right yep and so oops I need a zero and then that times 60 gives me a revenue of around 10,000 or not around but ten thousand eight hundred dollars so the price that maximizes revenue is sixty dollars maximum revenue is ten thousand eight hundred dollars Okay.